Hello everybody, this is Pastor Michael at Ascension Lutheran Church in Torrance, California. It's great to have you with us for this, our first of three midweek Advent services that we're going to have. Today is the 2nd of December. We'll also have one on the 9th of December, one on the 16th of December, and then we'll skip that 23rd of December uh, as a message and go to the 24th. Well, we, where we will have a service, uh, much like we have on Sunday mornings, our playlist service, where you can join us for Christmas Eve worship. And then on Christmas Day at 9.30 a.m., we're going to have an outdoor communion service held in the back of our property as the others have been held. You will need to register for the outdoor service. You can do that by going to our website at ascensiontorrents.org. We're also going to be sending out emails to our church members that we have the email addresses for. Um, and uh, it will give you the link so that you can register for the Christmas outdoor service. Well, once again, thank you for joining us this evening. And we begin with a song from Brianna Abram. Mm -hmm. to read to you from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25. 
Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son and called his name Jesus. There are times when I wonder about what Joseph had to have been going through during those early days, when he knew that Mary was with child, but he also knew that it wasn't his, how confused and hurt and angry he must have been. And for God to intervene and to give him that dream was such a blessing, to allow him to understand the nature of that child that was within Mary, that that he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. To relieve him of the anger and the frustration and the fear. Here's the thing though, even after Joseph had the dream, it wasn't a guarantee that he was going to respond the way he did. He could have still decided to divorce Mary because well, look at, all, look at how people might respond. Look at the things that people are going to say about him, about Mary, about the boy. Oh, and trust me, those things were said. And they persisted throughout the life of Jesus. We have instances in the scripture where the scribes and Pharisees actually made reference and alluded to the fact that Jesus may not have known who his father really was. So those fears were real. Joseph then had it under his control to be either obedient to God or not. You know, one of the important lessons that I try to teach people when I'm counseling with them is that we need to understand what we can control and what we can't. What we can control, we need to do in accordance with what God has told us in scripture and what he lays on our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to be obedient to that. But there are many things which we cannot control and we simply have to face the fact that that's all up to God. Joseph couldn't control what people were going to think about him, about Mary, about Jesus. But he could control whether or not he responded to the message that God sent him through the angel. He could be obedient. And even there, our obedience can only come through faith trusting in the Lord. And then I wonder, you know, how, how can we best define that faith, that, that place where we are when we can be obedient to God? Well, I think it's right here in this passage, in the word Emmanuel, God with us. As we recognize who Jesus is, that he is Emmanuel, he is God with us, then we can do the things in life that we're called to do, that we have the power to do and to control. 
We can do them because God is with us. And all of those things which we cannot control, that we get so anxious about and so worried about, we need to know, too, here, that God is with us, that Jesus is with us, that he has those things under control. And it's his promise that he will work all things out for our good. Because he is with us. Jesus is with us. And he gives us the power to do the things that we need to do, that we're called to do in obedience to him. Like loving our wives, loving our husbands, loving our children, loving one another, being kind to one another, being patient with one another, understanding one another and putting ourselves in other people's shoes. All of those things are things that we are called to do as Christians. And God gives us the power to do it because he is with us. And then all of those things which we cannot change, that we have no power to change, he's with us there too. We know that no matter what happens in this world, whether this pandemic is lifted or or it goes another year or two years, those things are out of our control. So many things are out of our control. But God is with us. And that's what Advent is all about. It's a reminder that God is with us as we wait. As we wait for his glorious return, we know that he is still with us through Jesus Christ. Have a good night, everybody.